Like we're live. Hello everyone, I'm Chris from MediaFreshPress.com and I'm here with Nathaniel Brennis from OneMoreCupOfCoffee.com and we're here to talk about videos this week. Um, it's Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern, so that's why we're here. Uh, it's 4 p.m. What is that, Pacific, where you're at? Yeah. Okay. So 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. So this is where we are every Thursday at this time. And uh, we talk about, you know, blogging, affiliate marketing, SEO, social media, uh, content creation, all that fun stuff. And like I said, this week we're going to be talking about video, which is something we haven't ever talked about, have we? I don't think so. Yeah. Not uh, in depth, topic wise. Yeah, so uh, this should be a pretty good uh, show. I'm sure we'll cover a lot of stuff here. So. What did you do this week? How was your week? Uh, pretty unproductive. <laughs> uh, I did a few reviews here. I, I can't say that. Uh, I think the, the hardest thing for me, or at least the when I get in my slumps, is it's hard for me to tell if what I'm doing now is going to actually produce results. So... You know, like, you write a review, you write a couple blog posts, you're like, what's the point? <laughs> How do I know if it's going to rank? Um, anyway, so I've kind of been in one of those slumps. I did, however, uh, make my first sale from my beer site. Oh, yeah? Yeah, uh, which is pretty cool because I wasn't really trying. Uh, it was kind of like a side project, and I just wanted the, the blog about some stuff, and I sold some uh, unique beer glasses that are designed for this specific type of beer. So I sold some of those, and then I wrote uh, another post about some other beer glasses, and so that's kind of been something that I've been working on with that is this, like, series of beer glass reviews. Yeah, cool, man. That's uh, that's pretty good news. How long have you been working on that site now? Uh, I would. I started about six months ago, and I'd say I've been blogging regularly for about two or three months, about once or twice a week. Yeah, that's good news. I, I was wondering, you know, because uh, we've talked about it before, and then we kind of didn't talk about it for a while, so I was wondering what was going to go on <clears throat> before it was all over with with that site. So was it through Amazon? Yeah, cool. uh, which would be my first ever real Amazon sale. <laughs> Like, I've sold stuff before on accident. You know, someone clicks your link, and then they go buy something else. Uh, and I've accidentally sold stuff through my own links or bought stuff through my own links before. Um, but this was actually what the post was about that I actually uh, sold one of on Amazon. <laughs> Jay says, <laughs> I love my new beer glasses. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's funny. <laughs> so yeah, that was promising. the The funny thing is, is you never know which direction the site's gonna go. Cause I always, um, I mean, I guess if I was a better business owner, I might know. <laughs> but, like, you know, I started off and I was thinking I was gonna sell a bunch of homebrew equipment, and so far it's just been a lot of like beer tasting stuff that I've been that I've been doing, and uh, I haven't really done a lot of homebrew stuff on the site. So that might be. Uh, the new direction that I want to take it. I also eventually want to do, um, I signed up for a bunch of beer magazines, and so they, a lot of those have affiliate programs, so I can do reviews of those, and those are all subscription-based, so that would be recurring. Uh, and then I want to do uh, Beer of the Month clubs, so you can sign up to clubs where they send you special types of beer every month and do reviews of those. And I know another guy who actually does have uh, like an affiliate stuff set up with them and he, he does reviews and he has that featured prominently on his site so uh, it sounds like that uh, that could be a potential source of profit for me uh, yeah that sounds pretty cool especially the uh, subscription thing John Worthy wants to know <laughs> uh, do you have original Weiss white beer yeah Plus like a wheat, wheat beer um, there's a couple different shapes. I do have, uh, I don't know if they're the original ones, but I do have the ones, you know, they're really tall, really narrow, and then they have a, like a big 
bold at the top. Um, for anyone who doesn't drink beer, they have that because the, the wheat beers are usually really um, bubbly, so there's a lot of head that goes on top, and so that's why they have the big bowl on the top, so you can get a lot of the uh, a lot of the foam there. What's the uh, what's the link to your beer site so people can check it out? Um, <laughs> I'll post it. I was gonna post it in that new thing they have. It's brew7.com. Yeah, I know. We're supposed to have this really cool new, uh, this new, uh, what do they call it, showcase thing where we can post links and you guys watching can see what we're talking about. But let's see if it works. Yeah, it's not working at all. So anyway, it's brew and the number 7.com for anybody who wants to go check that out. Um, hold on, Jay had another question too. Uh, John Worthy said that's it, so hmm, that's cool. Uh, I think your beer site would benefit from an online community or forum. I do too. There are quite a bit of uh, homebrew forums around. I can think of at least two, two or three um, off the top of my head. And that's actually the the kind of intimidating thing about this niche is I feel like it's well. Two different things. One is that the beer forums rank for a ton of stuff. Um, even low competition keywords, it's always the same forums, and they're always ranked up there. So I think that's going to be kind of tough for some of the keywords that I might want to target. Um, the other thing is that it's a very do-it-yourself community where uh, it's maybe like, I don't know quite how to describe it, like people are pinching pennies. Like a lot of guys, they'll weld their own brew stands or they'll build their own equipment, which would be an opportunity for like a guide or stuff. But you can get a lot of this information for free, uh, and people are using like old stuff from around the garage. And, and anyway, so I think it might be hard to actually sell stuff. So what I want to do, or part of my plan, is I want to kind of target that. Uh, new brewer who's kind of intimidated by that type of stuff. Like for me, I would never build my own equipment just because I don't have the skills to do it. I'm, I'm totally the person who's going to spend two grand on a, on a brew stand because I don't know how to weld. Um, <coughs> so i got to kind of target those people. But anyway, that's just kind of one of the intimidating yeah. things about this niche. Well, I mean, one of the things that I was thinking when you said that was like... Uh... I know we're off topic again, but one of the things I was thinking about when you said that was, um, <clears throat> you know, it's the same people ranking over and over. Well, I mean, that may be a good thing, actually. That may mean that that's just, you know, all that really Google is seeing that's quality, so there may be a good opportunity for you there. And the do-it-yourself thing, man, you could just put together, like, you know, on your, maybe, like, if you're making a video or, or a post or whatever and you're talking about how you're doing this, you can put together at the bottom of the post like a resources thing. It doesn't necessarily have to be beer stuff. You know, like I bought this drill or drill bit or whatever from Home Depot for blah, blah, blah. You can pick it up right here. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, I was also just reading Jay's comment here. Yeah, of course. Um, uh, yeah, there are a plethora of... Make money online blogs, and you have one. <laughs> I think competition should. Since I don't think competition should be an issue, as the passion is there, which equals great traffic potential. That's the other thing. Not to complain. <laughs> I don't want to feel like I'm complaining here, but the other thing that's intimidating about this niche is that people are so passionate about it that that's what they do. Um, you know, I feel like the make money online niche, it was kind of easy because uh, people, like, there's so much crap out there. All you have to do is, like, meet a very minimum standard of just being honest. <laughs> All you have to do is be honest, and you're basically in the top 10% of make money online blogs. <laughs> Not necessarily for ranking, but of quality, where a lot of guys, they just do this stuff because it's their hobby, and they'll spend you know, 10 hours writing up a, a picture picture guide on a homebrew forum on how to build your own homebrew stand with no monetary incentive at all. 
Um, which, I mean, is just incentive for me to step up my game, but yeah. it's like I, I got to be on my game to actually provide quality here. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. It does sound pretty tricky, but I'm sure you could do it, man. You got the skills on the marketing side of it, so... Oh yeah, it's it's coming along, and then it's just a matter, like like I said, of me finding a niche. You know, my niche is home brewing, but even within home brewing, I gotta kind of find a niche there. You know, whether it be like a beer tasting thing with the beer glasses, or a beer connoisseur thing with the with the beer beer the club month. You know, I don't have to be like how to build your own homebrew stand type do it yourself person. Yeah, exactly. Well, keep us updated on it. Sure. I will. Um, I guess let's go ahead and jump into this video of topic we got today, uh, which I'm going to say, too, you may want to... That's probably one thing them guys don't know how to do, you know, embed videos or make video stuff. That could be a, a, a competitive edge right there in itself. Yeah, I used to do a lot more video than I do now. Yeah, I'm trying to get back into it, man. I don't know if it was coming up with this topic that's got me, you know, back on it again, but um, I'm trying to get more involved in it. I want. I wish I was creating a video every day because it's a little easier to create a three-minute video than it is to create, uh, you know, a 1,500-word post. You know, <laughs> it takes a little <laughs> bit less time. <laughs> uh, so <clears throat> I've been looking into that, but... Um, what, one of the first topics we got is actually kind of a carryover from from uh, last week's thing. We talked about outsourcing last week, and so the first the first thing we're going to discuss here is like outsourcing, maybe just the entire video creation or your intros or the video scripts and stuff like that. You ever done anything like that? Outsourcing video? Yeah, any part of the video. Yeah, um, I definitely have. Really. Yeah, and uh, well, a couple different ways. One one thing that I did that was kind of interesting was uh, I basically took a post on my blog, and I had someone narrate the post into an audio file, and it, on Fiverr, um, I think for a 500 word post is five bucks, something like that, yeah. and um, then I had someone do. A, uh, so then, then I had all these stock photos. I basically picked five stock photos, and I said, uh, again, on Fiverr, I had someone, I said, okay, here's an audio file, here's five stock photos, can you mash them together and make a video? And so they did that, and then I had a, a video, it was kind of like repurposing content, um, video based on a blog post with pictures that I stuck up on YouTube, and it got some views and got some traffic to the site. It wasn't a smashing success, but <laughs> it was my first foray into, like, outsourcing video. That's uh, that's pretty cool. Then. And you got that done at Fiverr? Yeah. Wow. Hm. Sweet, man. I've never... Uh, actually, I, I did outsource a couple of video things. I was going to say I didn't, but I forgot. I did for a client. Uh, we had just, like, a... <laughs> I hate to say it, but it was a... Of course, it was a weight loss thing that she was doing. Uh, but she had a video testimonial done, and then I did a video script, which I never actually ended up publishing, but that was all done on Fiverr, too. Um, there's probably better places to get video stuff done, but it seems like people at Fiverr are doing a pretty good job of it, so. I did do some uh, video outsourcing on Odesk as well, and that is expensive. I'm <laughs> sure it is. Wow. I think... Um, so I had one of those uh, teleprompter, uh, not teleprompter, like a guy standing in front of a green screen. Mm -hmm. um, he was, I think he was Romanian, but he had pretty good English, and he stood uh, in front of like a green screen and was like pointing to stuff, and he had his whole system down. Uh, if, you were, if you aren't familiar with the video stuff, it would look pretty cool. If you saw all the projects, like his example, it was very much like a formula that they just whipped together. And that was like a hundred and something bucks or like seventy five bucks for a for a thirty second video or something like that. It was yeah. I mean for a video that you don't have to make, I mean a hundred bucks is hundred bucks, but you gotta make it count. Like you can't be making 
casual casual videos to upload every day. Yeah, let's let's try this and see if it works. Huh? That ain't gonna happen. <laughs> uh, so one thing I did do is uh, this was kind of a cool thing I did is. Uh, I wanted to test different languages for for one of my niches, so I got into. I wrote down like the top thirty most used languages in the world, and I just found people from those countries on Odesk to create a video testimonial in their own language. Actually, two, one in English and one in their their native language. And then uh, they created the. I gave them the script. I said. I forget how much it was. It was like 20 bucks, 25 bucks, something like that. And I said, okay, here's a script. You've got to translate it to your native language, and you've got to do two videos. And I uploaded them, and they get a little bit of traffic, but combined, uh, and with an affiliate link in there, like it's a regular source of income. Wow. Cool, man. That's pretty cool. Um, I know a lot of like CPA affiliates are using video too. In what way? Uh, just posting it on YouTube and putting a, a link in the description. Uh, like, yeah, but I mean, I'm sure they're doing it other ways too. But I know of a lot of them that are just doing that. A regular affiliate link. Uh, one of the things, of course, is they. Say they have some video of you know some super celebrity doing something, you know, crazy, whatever it is. Especially when the news breaks about a celebrity, that's how you see all those videos pop up. Like, oh, you know, Miley Cyrus does this, and then you go there, and it's not actually that. And it says, you know, watch the video over here or something like that. That's an affiliate thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's what a lot of these make money online products tell you to do. They, they don't even try to pretend to be legitimate. They're like, <laughs> steal this person's video, put your affiliate link in there from ClickBank, and that'll make you money. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Speaking of ClickBank, do you still use that? You know, it's funny you brought that up because uh, I wanted to talk about that today, <laughs> even though it's not related to video. Um, I... You know, being bored bored this week and being unproductive, I've been kind of looking at how to expand uh, into other niches or at least feel like I'm doing something, making progress. I was looking on ClickBank on the marketplace, and there's actually some interesting stuff on there. Um, I used to be really down on ClickBank, and there is a lot of crap on there. But if you get outside of some of the popular niches like... World of Warcraft, or make money online, or gambling stuff. I can't believe gambling systems is a whole category in ClickBank, but uh, like I looked at farming stuff and I found um, how to build a chicken coop, uh, how to raise, how to start your own tilapia farm. Uh, <laughs> um, what were some of the? I still got a tab open. Is it all ebook type stuff or? Uh, ebooks, forums, video guides, um, trick photography stuff. There, there's uh, cake making was one that I found that was pretty cool. Uh, anyway, there's uh, a lot more interesting topics than I originally thought. Hmm. Yeah, I, uh, <clears throat> I went into clickbait quite a few times, man, especially when I first started. I just I never did like it. Whole lot. I made a couple sales through there, but I never really did like it. <clears throat> and then, you know, a lot of people were really down on it. I think there for a while it got really sleazy. And <clears throat> I've been getting a couple emails from them, which I didn't even know I was still like on their list. But apparently they've redone the whole inside of that place, have they? No, it's pretty much the same <laughs> <laughs> from what I have seen. Damn. Liars. All right. Well, Jay's got a comment here. Oh. Oh, there. It says, uh, Jay says, I find having a dedicated video area with lights and camera always set up really helps. So, oh yeah. So okay, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, actually, I have a, a little setup in here right now. It's my, 
I look better than I did last week. Last week I rushed in here and set everything up. I don't know if you remember, man, but my whole face was <laughs> super white. It was terrible looking. Uh, but now I've got X's on the floor. I think this is where I'm going to keep my lights. Maybe adjust them a little bit more, but yeah. Oh, wow, you even have X's on the floor. Yeah, well, now I do because last week was horrible, man. Even though this week still looks kind of dark a little bit, huh? This side of my face is kind of weird looking. Huh. Yeah, I actually I bought these um, these lights from my brother. I think they could work, I guess. I use them for my for my beer photo shoots. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's tough because the lighting the lighting in my house isn't great. So when I drink at night and I want to, because I do like beer tastings, and then I take notes and post them on my blog. Um, the lighting for the for taking pictures of the beer is terrible. But if I drink during the day, then that pretty much <laughs> ruins the rest. <laughs> the rest of the day, I'm like having a beer at two o'clock. I'm like, ah, I don't need to do anything for the rest of the day. I'm good. So anyway, that's what the lights are for in the back. Your lighting always looks good when we do the when we do these shows here. Is that just I'm right through the window here? Uh, okay. Yeah, it always looks pretty good, man. And that's a laptop camera you're using, isn't it? Um, no, it's a the Logitech C920. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Um. I got one window here, and I don't. Th it's on the. I guess I don't know what side of the house it is, but it's it doesn't get much light through it. Plus, it's burning up, so I got to keep it covered most of the time. So I bought these two lights from Amazon. Actually, it came with three lights, two stands that are about. I guess they probably go to eight or nine foot, maybe. Eight foot, and then a short little one that'll probably go from anywhere from like two foot to four foot. Uh, with they come with the little umbrellas and a case for like thirty bucks, thirty five bucks. So that <laughs> was really good, man. I yeah, you sent me that link, and I almost I almost bought it. Um, just because exa exactly what Jay said, it's nice to have if you have it set up in a dedicated area. All you gotta do is walk by, uh, turn on your camera start recording and you can just say something kind of off the cuff and put it on YouTube and um, but then I thought I wasn't sure if I was really going to use it so I ended up not buying it but I might later on yeah the only problem I can see with these is like I said the thing was 30 bucks so I can imagine I don't know what kind of material that is but it's like that really shiny looking uh, thin I don't know what you call that like polyester or something I don't know but it's like kind of see-through and kind of not. But I can see that eventually that's going to wear out probably pretty soon. But for 30 bucks, man, I could probably just buy a whole new set and get, you know, two more umbrellas or three more, whatever it comes with. Yeah, I was surprised that they were so cheap. I'll, um, I'm going to pull it up right now. I'll do a uh, screen share. Yeah. Yeah, Jay's got another good point about this real quick. Oh, go ahead. Can you see my screen share? Uh, let me blue box you. There it goes. Yeah, so that's done. So Two 30. little umbrellas and a light kit, and it's only, uh, this one is 40 bucks. Yeah, so it, I'm sure it was probably the same price when I got it. So 38 bucks, 40 bucks. that's still really, really cheap for what that is. I couldn't believe it. Um, and they come apart and everything, man. They, they even came with the bulbs, which is crazy. Um, they come apart and everything. You can turn these here. You can turn these, I guess, on their side for some reason. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can. Um, I guess if you need to get into a weird spot or something. But actually what I'm going to do... <laughs> with one of the other ones is I'm going to drill my, my camera that I've got sitting up there. You know how it's got the little platform that clips on your monitor? I'm going to drill a hole through that and use one of my other stands and set it on that stand so then I have a tripod for my camera. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> but Jay, Jay says right here you should place that short light behind you, like behind me here, and 
I've heard of doing that. That's I can't. I think that's called a key light or something like that. Um, and I tried to do it once, but it looked really bad, man. Or at least it looked bad on my end. It might have looked okay on y'all's end, but or I had it set wrong or something like that. Who knows? But I had it right behind me, like right behind my chair, showing up like through the middle of my back, and it just didn't look right to me. What is that supposed to do? It's supposed to like. I guess, you know, create a, uh, I forget what they call it, but it's supposed to give more of a profile to me, you know what I mean? Like, so it doesn't look like I'm just blending in, which kind of doesn't make sense to me because you'd think that that would make you blend in more, but hmm. I'm going to try, try it real quick. <laughs> but, yeah, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a, if you go up on Google and you search for, like, uh, you know, because there's all kinds of different ways you can set up your lights, but this is the most popular one. you got to have one that comes in from the side and then one that comes in, I think, kind of like at the front angle and then the one behind you. And that's like, I forget what it's called, but it's the most popular lighting setup there is. Uh, uh, is that the infinite white? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, Jay says the backlight creates an ambient glow. There you go. But yeah, I was surprised to learn like if you ever see someone speaking and they have just a pure white background, I thought that was like a green screen thing. But it, I think it's just the setup that you have there. There's like two lights coming in at different angles and one behind you, and it basically washes out. I think you have to have a white a white sheet in the background, and it basically washes out the whole background, so it looks like you're, uh, you know floating in the air or like in purgatory or something where there's just nothing behind you and you can just be the focus speaker, you know? Yeah. Uh, see, it doesn't do anything, man. Just don't look right to me. I guess that's better. That looks a little better. That looks looks like a green screen kind of, though. <laughs> that's one of the other things I want to talk about, man, is green screen stuff. Um, I always thought that stuff was really expensive, but I've heard that the new Camtasia does that. Like, has the a green screen? screen? Yeah. Like, I'm sure you have to buy the screen, but it has the capability to do it. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. You're uh, talking about Camtasia 8? I don't know. The newest one, which I thought you used it. Yeah, but I, I use it for very limited stuff. Like... <laughs> I mean, it works for what for what I do, but I don't get, get into too much um, video creation stuff. Yeah, Camtasia was basic, basically one of the most uh, valuable tools that I've bought over the years. If I had to rank in the top five Camtasia, Camtasia and Snagit would definitely be in the top ten, um, maybe the top five. Yeah, Snagit is a really, really cool little tool, man. And I, they have, you know, where you can do video screenshots with it too, like record your screen, but um, I hardly ever use it for that. I actually kind of don't like it for that, but it's made for images, I'm pretty sure. And it, yeah. For images, it is great, man. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. When I first got it, I was like, wow, I probably spent two hours just playing with all the little stuff trying to figure it out. It's really cool. Having um, Snagit has made my review process, um, especially for me, because you know when you're doing a review of a product online, everything's on the internet, you know, on your screen. So I just go through and I just screenshot everything, and it just makes it so much easier. Um, you know, you just see something, you kind of drag. In fact, I'll uh, pull it up and show. Okay, I got to close some programs here. That uh, I try to always have that open on my on my desktop because it's, especially when I'm writing, I try to have because I'll be writing, and then it just kind of sits there wherever you want it, off to the side or at the top, wherever you drag it to. But I can be writing and be like, oh yeah, this needs a picture here, so I'll just go real quick, click it, pull my you know cut the part out that I want the image to, and it, I mean it makes it so much easier. And the ability to not have flat, ugly-looking images is really great, too. Yeah. Okay, so can you see my screen? Yep. 
Okay, so Snagit is, I always have it open, and it's over here on the left, this little red dot camera. So yeah. if I'm going around on the internet, and, you know, I see this picture here, and I say, oh, I want to grab the screenshot, all I do is hover over, click it once, and then it brings up this um, arrow, and then um, or this uh, crosshairs. And then I just click once, highlight, and drag to... Uh, get whatever the screenshot that I want to get, and then when that's done, it automatically opens it into the editor, and then you've got all these cool things. Or even the simplest thing is just adding a shadow. Mm -hmm. like you can do that with just one button. And then another cool thing is, uh, well, I won't make this a Snagit tour, tool, uh, tour here, but uh, I also use the uh, cutout feature. It's cool. So you can kind of create those uh, nice little tear images if you just want a portion of it. And the other one I use is the highlight. It's nice. Yeah, that is pretty cool. See, I didn't even know you could do that, that tear thing. I always wondered how you got that, because I use the other one. The, if you this go one? To, um, that one, or if you click the drop-down arrow, there's another one, too. Yeah, the one below that, actually, I like to use a lot, too. So, But I never could figure out. I thought you were putting two images together when you did that one. Which you no. can do with Snagit. What's that? I said, which is something that you can do with Snagit. You know, can put, or can? You can. Can do what? Like, you have your background there. Like, I'm just saying, if that was two images, that's something you could do with Snagit, which I didn't realize for a long time either. That you can just drag it. Like, right now, you can drag another image into that image there and make the canvas actually bigger, right? See? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, so you can drag that canvas and make it bigger, and then you've got, you know, I'm just saying if you wanted to, that's how I thought you were doing those before. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, no, but that is a kind of a cool feature. Yeah. Anyway, um, did not... I clicked the wrong button there. The other cool thing that I like to use a lot for um, reviews is the uh, Spotlight and Magnify. You can kind of <clears throat> highlight that, go back to Image, Spotlight and Magnify, and then you can highlight a certain part of the picture. Damn, that's cool, man. See, I didn't know that either. We'll have to do a Snagit tutorial at some, at some point. Anyway, yeah, uh, let me pull you off there. Yeah, Snagit's pretty awesome, um, but the video capabilities are pretty limited. It's basically like a, a just a simple, simple uh, short video, and you can't edit it. Camtasia, on the other hand, is the Snagit of. <laughs> they're made by the same company. Let me yeah, open Camtasia weird. Studio here. The new Snagit does let you edit video, but not like it's not like serious editing tools or anything like that. But you do have some editing stuff with it. Um, yeah, you must be talking about Camtasia 8. That must be the... I think that's the newest one. Maybe. <clears throat> so I use... when I Are you pulling up uh, Camtasia right now? Yeah, the thing about Camtasia, it takes forever to load. Does uh, it? Even I, I got Camtasia on a brand new computer, and it was taking a shockingly... Long time to load. Wow. I use uh, Screencast-O-Matic, man, and I'm sure that, uh, well, I'm, I'm positive that Camtasia is a lot better, but for the minor little stuff I have to do, um, Screencast-O-Matic works really great, and it is super cheap, but <clears throat> I think it would be better to be able to do, like, audio tracks and stuff like, like Camtasia can do. How much is Screencast-O-Matic? It's like $15 a year, man. <laughs> yeah, Camtasia's 300 and then yeah. <laughs> if they come out with a new version, they make you pay for it. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I got Camtasia here. Um, so with Camtasia, what you can do, you can see at the bottom of my screen here, um, I've got the recording button. And that, that'll pull up the recorder here, and then you can um, 
you know, you can choose a certain portion of the screen. So if I only want to record <coughs> a little bit, I can drag and drop, and it'll uh, pick up only part of the screen, or you can do just the full screen. And you have, like, different audio settings and whatnot. And then I think I should be recording now. No, see, it's frozen. <laughs> yeah, I can't tell if it's... Um, Camtasia, or if it's my setup, or what, but I had problems with Camtasia with my camera. Okay, it is recording. And with Windows 8. Um, anyway, once you do that, we'll stop. It's going to pull up the... Uh, okay. So, the confusing thing, it takes a while to get used to it. It records... Um, in this camera file here. So we'll just call this uh, test1. But when you create a project in uh, Camtasia Studio, it saves it as um, something else, uh, camproj. So you're working with a whole bunch of different new uh, kinds of file types, uh, yeah, anyway, it's just kind of confusing. But, um, like, you can separate the audio and the video. So, let's, okay, here we go, separate audio and video. So now I have my audio and video on two different tracks. So I can do, like, uh, music layovers, or I can, um, you know, let's say I, I mess up the audio, I can, you know, make the audio quieter, or I can chop out the audio. Um, they have these cool things called callouts. So, yeah. if I want to uh, add an arrow, then I can put an arrow somewhere in the screen, and then it'll fade in and out. So, like, if I want to, let's see, if I want to delete the audio, but keep the video, and you can see that arrow pops up there and then disappears. Anyway, I won't go through the whole, um, so, the whole thing there, but it's, it's, it's really easy to use those little um, little tiny features that can enhance your video. You know, you can have an arrow move across the screen, you can do fade in and fade out. Yeah, um, let me show you this one here real quick. It's, it's pretty cool, man, but it doesn't do like that. It doesn't separate uh, audio and video into different tracks. I can uh, put different, you know, I can like make my video and then record um, a different audio over the top of it or the other way around. But um, another thing it does is like scripts. Like I can go in and make different scripts and like <clears throat> it'll just kind of automatically do that. That's something I haven't played with a lot yet, but let me show you this. Hopefully this don't mess nothing up. Try this again. Last time I tried this, it screwed everything up. So, let's see. Are you able to see that? Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, so, I'm just going to record that so it'll let me get in my thing. It gives you a really cool countdown. You can, you know, do your little drawing. Uh, you know, it gives you a few tools there you can do while you're recording, you know. Um, then when you're done, it kind of does like snag it does and pops up this thing where all, I guess that's the editor where all your videos go. It's going to take a while. But it's really easy to like, this is what I used to have so much of a hard time with on YouTube, man. I was editing videos, so like when I want to, hopefully it's... Hey guys, it's yeah, I don't know how to turn that down. But anyway, like if I wanted to, I can do, you know, this is the overlay thing you were talking about, but the cutting out thing is really, you can see all the ones I've done on this one here. I'm only seeing the um, your browser. Really? Yeah. That's probably how I'll show it up. You're not seeing this here? <laughs> I don't know what this is. I'm just seeing Google Browser. Oh, Ooh. there we go. Oh, that looks like Live Hangout. 
You're not seeing the the thing here, the gray box here? No, I'm seeing myself. Okay. Dang it, man. Anyway, so I'll make a video about that one day. I don't know how I'm going to record my recording software. but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of people use uh, Screencast-O-Matic, so it must be pretty good. It's pretty decent, man, For the, especially for the cost. Um, once I figured it out and learned everything that it could do, it's pretty simple. Um, but, like I said, it doesn't have those kind of features like Camtasia does. You can't see the audio and stuff like that. You kind of just got to go with it, I guess, with Screencast-O-Matic. But it is a really cheap, quick solution. And, you know, they, they will host video for you and stuff like that. So I, I like it. I'm What I'm really worried about is getting super attached to it and then getting to a point where I'm going to have to get better software like Camtasia and then have to learn all that, man. <laughs> um, can you record from your webcam and do editing on that, or does it only do screencasts? No, yeah, it'll do from my webcam. It Does Camtasia not do that? Yeah, it does. So, like, that's kind of the one thing I like about it. As soon as you open that software up, it gives you the option to record from one or the other or both. So I can, like, I'm sure you've seen the videos where they have the little dude in the corner talking and he's doing a screen share. I really like that. <clears throat> um, but like I said, I'm worried about having to switch. How long did it take you to learn Camtasia? I would say about two or three months of making regular videos. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, which isn't bad, um, and I still don't know all of it. But that was where I was like comfortable, where I could like record a video and then like get it edited pretty quick. Um, it's, I think it's fun editing videos and stuff like that, cutting them out. And I hate it. I hate it. That's partly partly why I stopped making so much videos because I could make a thirty minute video and it'd take me an hour to um, to edit it. It's because I'm so bad with um, recording. You know. I'll, forget what I have to say or I won't say it right or I'll mess up the audio or something. You know, with Hangouts, like, I don't have a choice. Yeah. <laughs> it's freaking, it's live. <laughs> but when I get uh, get the editor fired up, I'm like, oh, that volume is too low or, oh, I don't like my expression there <laughs> or whatever. Um, when I used to do, when I first started doing, like, screenshots especially, man, I just did it, you know, whatever came out at the end is what came out. Um, now, the problem with that was that I used to have to always start over because I, I do like you did. I didn't know how to edit video, though, so I was like, oh, fuck, now i got to start all the way back over. But I've yeah. had so many frustrating times, like, because it looks bad if you do too many cuts, I think. Yeah. So... Uh, when I want to do a recording like all the way through, like if I want to do use it for an ad or, or for some sort of like quick video, uh, what I should do is write a script. But even with a script, I'm trying to look at the camera and I can't look at the camera and the script. And it takes me like 12 times to record the video and by the end of it I'm just so frustrated. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what I was going to say about the script thing in uh, Screencast-O-Matic. We, it has a scripts function <clears throat> where you can go in, like you can record your video, right? And then it, you can open the script thing um, and make individual scripts, like I guess by scene or frame or whatever, or however you want to break it up. And then it lets you, like I guess, package all that up and send it off to an outsourcer or a freelancer, I mean. And then they see the script, they see the video, and the script just tells them what to say at each part of the video. So, like, if you were talking about doing a voiceover thing, um, or you can do, use it for yourself, too, which is, like you said, something you should probably do, but I never, never write a script, man, unless it's for a client or something. Then I'll, then I'll at least partially put something together before I start recording. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I thought Jay says here he's uh, – Jay's on a Mac, and he uses ScreenFlow, which I know uh, Kyle and all those guys use. Mac people. Apparently it's pretty good. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good stuff about it, too. Um, let's see. I'm going to hit some of these comments up real quick. Uh, Linda says home stills are still happening. Yes, they are. 
I have a family in Tennessee that have plenty of stills. Playing uh, <laughs> uh, banjos out in the woods. <laughs> yeah. Sick fuckers. <laughs> Uh, John says it looks like Nate found his niche, which is sitting in your closet. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure what that was about. I'm not sure what's sitting in my closet. Beard? Or? No, I'm assuming because you're sitting. It looks like you're sitting in your closet, basically, to us. Oh, I, I don't know. What's that behind you? Is that a? Clo- I'm pointing like you can see what. Yeah, I'm- it's like a like a closet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then Jay's comment about the backlight, and but you see, I just tried it, and it, the one thing I hate that it did, that maybe because of the lip on my whiteboard here, Jay was Jay said the backlight creates an ambient glow, which is what we were talking about earlier, about having this light behind me, but it made the, like the whole top of my head really dark, like that. So. Uh, <clears throat> I'm thinking maybe that's from this lip that's on my whiteboard here. Maybe the light's getting caught under there and throwing a shadow or something, but I don't know. This new place we got is kind of cramped up, man. I'm going to have to get something bigger or knock a wall down or something. I don't know. Huh. Uh, let's see. What else? Um, make sure we hit everything. Oh, you know, we really didn't hit on a lot of stuff. What do you think about video content, man? It's getting popular. I kind of wrote in the notes, do you think it's going to replace text in you know, the next few years? I'm sure it'll be a while, but I see it. I don't, I don't think so. Like, I know a few people who really don't like video, um, who prefer to read over watch a video because it's easier to skim. <clears throat> um, it's faster. It's faster to find stuff. So I think, and a lot of people can't watch video. Like I noticed in my um, wealthy affiliate review that I got more signups without videos. Like where I had some of the important content in the video, I, I, uh, I mean, I made a bunch of changes, so it was really hard to tell what came from where, which is my fault. But um, I don't feel like video at, added a lot to the review. And I used to do video reviews for all my reviews, and I really don't feel like um, I'm missing anything without the videos now. So I, and I know like people, some people people in WA are viewing WA in their uh, tablets and phones and stuff, and they're always complaining that they can't watch the videos. Uh, <laughs> like because you're viewing on this device or whatever. Uh, so I think a lot of people don't actually have laptops and don't actually have, especially in uh, kind of, like I know in China a lot of people don't have their own home computers, but they have a phone that can surf the Internet. So they're going to, you know, want to scroll through the text rather than use bandwidth um, <clears throat> and take the time to load the video. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, man. <clears throat> I don't know why they're not able to watch. I've seen that too in WA about them not being able to watch video stuff, but I use this phone all the time, and I'm always in Wealthy Affiliate on this phone, and I watch the videos from there. Um, matter of fact, that's one of the reasons I wanted to get a phone in the first place so I could watch it. Maybe, <clears throat> I mean, it's not easy. i got to adjust things and move it all around and everything, so it's definitely not like a one, one-touch solution, but... Yeah, I don't know. They might be missing some kind of. It, <laughs> who knows? They might be using like an old version of Android or something like that. That's not working for them. And maybe that's not even the um, the actual problem. Uh, it could be the browser they're using. Like I know my old Android phone uh, didn't even have a version of Chrome that it could use because it was so old. <laughs> so it was using uh, some sort of native browser to the phone is like called browser. <laughs> I don't even know what it was. Uh, the only browser that would modern browser that would work on it was uh, Opera. And even then uh, after a couple of updates that stopped working. So Yeah. Um, one of the things you said about people skimming videos, um, 
this is brought up a lot, man. Um, this is the biggest problem with video. I, I think it's really interesting too that you didn't see any benefit from having video. Maybe that maybe that says something, man. Um, but the fact that people can't skim them right now, I hate that too about video because I just kind of want to get to the good stuff sometimes and skip all the rest. But I think within the next few years, it may not even take that long, that we're going to have some solution to that figured out. I really do, man. There's too many entrepreneurs now. Somebody's going to figure something out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, one of the biggest problems I, I just recently heard that I never thought about with video is that, <clears throat> um, like, you know, busy people, like we are people that work from home, uh, you know, CEOs, whatever, executives, all these people, they don't watch video, <laughs> which is a really good point. These guys are always on the move. They don't watch video. They listen to stuff, though. You know what I mean? They're not going to read as much. They'll, they'll read probably before they watch a video. So I kind of thought that was interesting, too, and I've always wanted to get more into the audio stuff. But I thought with video getting more popular, it would be a waste of time. But now I'm starting to think maybe not, depending on your audience, I guess. I think depending on how you create content, there's um, definitely some opportunities to reuse the same content, create text, create video, and create an audio file, all of the same thing. Um, it's not going to work for everything, especially you know if you're doing a presentation or... Um, you're doing, I don't know, something with text that wouldn't work for audio, um, maybe some writing techniques or something that, that don't sound quite right. Um, but yeah, there's definitely the opportunity. I did for a while. I would, uh, same thing, I would write the article, do the video on Fiverr, and then I'd post a clip to SoundCloud. And, you know, eventually I figured out it wasn't really worth the time for me, uh, but it might be worth someone else's time. SoundCloud. SoundCloud is still free, isn't it? <clears throat> to a certain amount of bandwidth or space per month. Right. The first, uh, the first uh, experience I had with SoundCloud, man, I did this interview with uh, I can't remember his name now, but the guy from Content DJ, and it was like my first interview. I was really psyched about it. It was really cool, and I. I, it was something I did wrong, but we went through the whole interview, and I had it on SoundCloud, and at the end of it, I hit the wrong button or did something wrong and lost everything, and I have never been back to SoundCloud since. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here's a... Jay says, with the, with the webinars, people tend to stay engaged throughout the entire training. I'm not sure what he means. You're talking about audio instead of, I mean, uh, video instead of audio? Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, you know, the other day I watched a webinar on my Chromebook, and it was totally different, man. Like, I guess, I guess Chromebooks don't have Flash or something. I'm not really sure, but the whole thing was really different. It was terrible to watch, so that sucks, man. Maybe that's what those people are talking about. <laughs> They can't watch the webinars or something from their mobile devices. I bet that's what it is. Hmm. Yeah. You mean you mean my comment about people not being able to watch videos? Yeah. Um. My the, what I was talking about. People were specifically talking about training. Um, cool. But I'm sure the webinar thing might be an issue as well. <clears throat> this Jay is here. It uh, blows me away that members watch the entire webinar videos. I think they're great. I watch them all the way through. I've seen a few of them multiple times. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it does. I, I'll tell you what. When you're on the Internet, <laughs> it takes a lot of patience to sit through an hour video, no matter what it is. <laughs> Even when I'm watching a movie, I watched uh, Apocalypse Now recently, which is like three hours and it took me like a whole week just because I'd watch 20 minutes and I'd be like, hmm, I think I'm going to check my email. And, and Oh, I forgot to do this. And I don't care how engaging anything is. Like when everything is just a click away, like all it takes is a little distraction and you're, you're off, your thoughts off on another thing. 
Yeah, that's. I think that's an ever-growing problem too, man. And you're right. Probably video isn't the answer to that. Maybe that's why you're seeing what you what you're seeing when you said you know that having video reviews and stuff like that really wasn't a big difference. That's my other problem. My big problem with video is that I can't keep it short. Um, and I know a lot of people have the same thing. You want to say something short, and then you're sitting there talking to the camera, and you don't really know what you want to say, and you kind of go off, and then you repeat yourself. And pretty soon, it's a 10-minute video. And who wants to watch a 10-minute video of you saying, uh, yeah, I think this product is good, and I think this product is bad? Um, so you got to keep it concise, <laughs> but then um, even then, I think for me the reason I stopped making video is that it takes a lot of production time to produce a really short, high-quality video. You know, with moving graphics or different audio tricks or whatnot. I mean, you can sit in front of a camera and say something, but is it worth your time to spend 30 seconds saying something that you could write the exact same thing? For me, it was just hard to find a balance of what the video was actually good for, other than a link back from YouTube. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I agree with that, man. Today I posted that video about uploading to Instagram, and <clears throat> it ended up being like, I thought, you know, of course, it's going to be like a two-minute video. Perfect. Now, I turned it into like a seven- or eight-minute video. Now, I went back and cut it out and finally got it down to like three and a half minutes, which I think that's supposed to be like the perfect uh, perfect length, right? Somewhere around three or three and a half for YouTube videos. So, anyway, that's what I made it, and uh, it, it took some cutting on, but... I guess I guess you're right, but sometimes when I and there's got to be other people out there if I do it too. Like it depends on what I'm doing, but uh, sometimes I'll go to YouTube and I'll skip over the short stuff. I guess like maybe when I'm cleaning the house or something like that, or washing the dishes, I skip over the short stuff. I want to find a long video that's gonna play and I can listen to it the whole time I'm doing something else. So I guess I'm not technically engaged with the video at that point. <laughs> Um, I think for me, I can hold, um, you know, a 30-minute attention span if I am getting some immediate benefit from the video. Like, I absolutely have to learn this, and this video is going to tell me how to do it. Then I can sit, um, sit through the whole video. Uh, you know, if I was watching one of Jay's webinars about Google Analytics, and it was like, how to create goals and analytics or something, it's like, okay, I have to do this. I have to sit down and watch the video, then I can do it. You know, if I'm watching a general video like Beginner's Guide to something, uh, then, may, then maybe it'll take me a couple tries. <laughs> yeah. I'm with you there. Uh, we're coming up. We've got a couple minutes left, man. Do you got anything else you want to add to this before we get out of here? Yeah, one problem I ran into with YouTube, especially in the uh, Make Money Online niche, is that it's really easy to get your videos flagged. Um, I had uh, three or four sessions where someone went through and just flagged all my videos. So like 90% of my videos uh, are flagged on YouTube as commercially deceptive content. And it's weird. You can tell someone did it on purpose because it's like WordPress tutorials, uh, <laughs> how to add a blog post. And it's like, this video has been flagged as commercially deceptive. It's been age-restricted. <laughs> So the, their their uh, moderation process is not perfect, and all it takes is one person to go through and be like flag, 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 flag a whole um, playlist, and they kind of do that, which isn't a big deal. The videos are still up. Um, even stuff where I was reviewing products where it said in the title, it was like, this product review, don't spam YouTube, <laughs> and... I go in, I'm like, yeah, this is a crap product. They want you to steal videos. Don't do it. And it's like, this has been flagged as commercially deceptive content. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's YouTube for you. I think they've put a lot of work into, uh, maybe not a lot of work, but a lot of money into getting that whole system there uh, figured out because I think they were having problems in a lot of industries with stuff like that. 
uh, not just make money, but I'm sure that make money is a big one because, like you said, competitors know what to do to go in there and, and hurt you a little bit more than most other niches. But um, I think the new system inside YouTube, now that the comment thing is done uh, and back open again, that I think that they've got it handled. Matter of fact, I quoted, uh, I can't remember his name, but he's a chief architect at uh, YouTube for a recent article I wrote. And because uh, they just opened the comments on YouTube back up to being able to comment anonymously without a Google Plus profile. So he All said, right. yeah, yeah, he said something along the lines of they've got this, you know, but should have been saying that, but. Uh, some of the features, I guess, that the, the create the YouTube creators have with the top comments and stuff like that, and some of the new stuff they have in place is supposed to help with with moderation and comments and copyright and stuff like that. So we'll see, I guess. But yeah, YouTube is a brutal, brutal place. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't understand why. Uh, okay, I understand why, but why people leave the comment section open. Like, you don't leave your comment section open on the blog for spam, and people do it on YouTube. It's like free game. You can say whatever you want. And people are so unbelievably rude. Like, they, they say stuff on there where I can't believe that there are people that actually think that. <laughs> um, it's horrible, horrible stuff. It's yeah. the worst uh, place for comments anywhere on the internet that I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. Um, and people leave the comment section open. And the reason they do it, well, one of the reasons they do it that I know is that the more comments you get, the more you get put in YouTube's feed. And so you get more views, and people want the ad revenue. Uh, I close all my comments for the videos, or I moderate them manually. Um, yeah which I get a lot fewer comments, but I also get a lot fewer douchebags saying stuff. Um, like, so many trolls. It's like troll city in there. They just pick out... If, if you're going to put your face on YouTube, <laughs> uh, just be prepared with a bit of a thick skin because people will call you out on anything. They're like, oh, you did this. This was stupid. Or, oh, I can't believe you did that. Or, oh, I just wasted my life, uh, 30 <laughs> seconds of my life watching this. And you're like... I kind of worked hard on that, man. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely seen some stuff, man, where I'm like, God, you know, it's like you don't want your mom reading it. Like, no, God, don't come in here. Just like, uh, it's terrible, man. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I guess, I don't know. But, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's like the trash can of Internet comments, dude. It's just scummy, nasty crap. It's like you said, stuff that you can't believe people really think that way. You're like, is this guy serious? But I I haven't seen it be that bad lately, have you? I've seen it pretty nah, well. No, it used to be worse. It used to be worse. Yeah. We'll see. They've opened it back up again, so they did that, uh, I want to say on the 17th. Hmm. It could be off on that. But yeah, it was it was within the last week or so. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully, nothing bad. Uh, not to drag this on, have you ever done um, anything with Vimeo? Yeah, a little bit. Um, like I just use it to post my video so I can embed it. I really like Vimeo. Um, the player looks a lot nicer. It gives you a lot more control, a lot more branding capability. At least I have a pro account. Yeah. A lot more branding capabilities, um, a lot more customization of the player. Uh, it doesn't rank as well, obviously. And then I know Jay just posted. Did you see that post Jay made about um, they removed uh, video thumbnails from this from the search engines? Yep. Except for YouTube. Yep. I posted that in the community for anybody who wants to see it. But yeah, I saw that. So. Um, I have ranked some Vimeo videos before, but it's super low competition stuff. Like, so you've ranked them on your site or on they they rank at Vimeo in the search engines in Google. But what ranks the embed on your site? Oh, or? the video itself on Vimeo. Oh, okay. Hmm. 
That's pretty neat. Yeah, I guess I have seen a couple of Vimeos in the search now that I think about it. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, I like them. I definitely like the player. Like all, all everything you said is really, really nice. I'm gonna get a pro account here soon. Um. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I definitely like them a lot better. And one thing I wanted to mention, too, is that All-in-One SEO, uh, even though I'm kind of against it at this point, they just released a new video sitemap feature. So that should help because I know a lot of the people that watch this show and, and a lot of people just in general use that plugin. So um, that combined with a Vimeo uh, video should help you rank, I think. Hmm. What's the pro account there? How much does it cost? 200 a year. Yeah, that's not bad, man. It's really worth it, especially if you do a lot of video. Yeah, I mean, 200 a year is what, 15 bucks a month? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Something like that. I don't uh, know if I use $15 worth of it, but it's nice to have. If you have a sales page that's kind of important to you, it's nice to have that different looking player other than YouTube. Yeah. Um, YouTube is kind of, I don't know, everyone has it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah someone else was going to ask you about that. I cannot remember what it was now. Uh, I can't remember. <sighs> that sucks. Oh, well. I, I lost it. <laughs> Oh, oh, is it unlimited? When you got the pro account, can you upload unlimited? Like, is there any bandwidth or whatever that you can't go over? I think there's a limited um, bandwidth, because I saw something today that said if you want to use more than 20 gigabytes a month, talk to us about custom packages or something. Um, but I think it's pretty high. Like, I think it's, I think the, the business account or the pro account, whatever they call it, uh, is for people who are regularly producing uh, video or have clients that they're producing video for. Yeah. Um, I might. I think I might be able to get away with the Plus account because I know Plus is cheaper. It might be ninety nine dollars a year or something. Um, but I got the business one because their their policies are kind of uh, vague, at least the way I understand them about what is okay to post to your account. Um, they say no commercial content, but then they say uh, uh, the pro account is the only one that can have privacy, certain privacy settings. So it's almost like if you want to do any sort of commercial content, you have to get the uh, the pro account. But at the same time, I've seen a lot of commercial videos that have not been moderated, so maybe I'm not understanding what they mean by commercial content. Yeah, and maybe that's just a, uh, <clears throat> what do they call that, like a, uh, you know, I guess like some kind of disclaimer, just basically to, to protect themselves. That way if somebody goes on there being a major douchebag, being just super spammy and over-promotional, you know, uh, guy, or bringing people back to something that's really spammy or crappy, maybe that's their way out and say, okay, well, we're removing this video now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe so, like, it's a... It's a it's a term of service, but it's not enforced unless you go in there and be a dick about everything. Yeah. I don't know that, but that could be what it is. Huh. Um, yeah, not sure. Anyway. Yeah, we'll look into that. All right, I'm going to get out of here. It's burning up and I'm starving. So thanks, everyone, for watching. And we'll be back next Thursday at 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern and 4 p.m. Pacific. See you guys later. Thanks.